Hello everyone. Greetings from Study in India. Hope you are all doing well. This is the digital orientation session for Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science. And we have with us Dr. G. Elizabeth, sir, Director of International Affairs, and he will be presenting the uh, details about the orientation to you all today. This whole orientation is divided into two parts. First, the sir would explain us about all the uh, uh, interaction of the applicants, what all are necessary for the applicants to join uh, the HITS Institute and how it is faring. And then in the next session, you could ask uh, the sir about all the issues and queries do you have. You could see in the right hand side the corner of your, uh, of your screen, there is a chat box there. You could ask the question directly to the sir or to everyone and we would answer your questions. Sir, I am handing it over to you. Uh, please, you can start the session. We have around uh, the students who are uh, attending this session, and you will start your digital orientation. Unmute yourself. I think you are you have you are muted right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, you are unmuted. Please start the session now. Am I, are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you. Please, you could start the session now. Okay. Okay, good morning to all of you. I'm Dr. Ilavaragan, Director, International Affairs from Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science. Uh, first of all, I greet all of you and uh, I'm happy that Many of you have um, chosen Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science for your UG studies. Thank you for choosing Hindustan. And I will be presenting about the Hindustan Institute of Technology initially for around 15, 20 minutes. Then we can have our interaction. I'm also having uh, one Mr. George from Kenya to talk to you about his experience in Hindustan. Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science is part of the Hindustan group of institutions. There are more than 10 institutions um, teaching from kindergarten to doctorate. And we also have um, um, Orient Flight School in Mysuru, where pilots are being trained. And this group of institutions completed 50 years of service in education and celebrated its Golden Jubilee, where the um, Vice President of India, Sri M. Vankaya Naidu, was a chief guest. And the Governor of Tamil Nadu was also the special guest. The Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science and also the Hindustan Group of Institutions was founded by our chairman, late Dr. K.C.G. Varghese, and he was a great visionary. And he was the first one to start the aeronautical engineering um, training program in the country in the private sector. And Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science is among one of the five first private engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. She also founded the Air Asiatic, the first airline, private airlines in India. Now the university uh, is headed by our chancellor, Dr. Mrs. Elizabeth Burgess, and the pro-chancellor is Dr. Anand Jacob Burgess, and the directors are Mr. Ashok Burgess and Abhis, Dr. Abhis Sam. This is the timeline of the university, and it was established in 1985, and during these 35 years of its existence, it has moved uh, towards becoming one of the top engineering institutions in the country. 
and the institution, uh, Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science or Hindustan University is accredited by National Assessment and Accreditation Council with A grade and many courses are accredited by National Board of Accreditation and it is one among the top few private engineering colleges in the country. So it has got A grade by NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council with 3.3 CGPA out of four. And in the NIRF, we stand in uh, ranking 107 in the country. And we have got a graded autonomy. And uh, it is approved by University Grants Commission. AICT also has approved our institution. And in the QS uh, World Ranking, BRICS Ranking, we stand in the range of 301 to 350. And the university has received many awards for best university for promoting research, best institute providing global exposure, best business school, and so on. And it also has been certified for five years by the Rhineland Private Limited and the other rankings. India today has ranked Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science as first among private deemed to be universities in South India, second among private deemed universities in India. The Times Higher Education Ranking globally has ranked Hindustan among one of the top 50 universities for the Sustainable Development Goals 6, that is clean water and sanitation, and the top 100 for the uh, global um, sustainable development goals seven affordable and clean energy and number 12 responsible consumption and production and it is among the top 300 under the overall category among 800 universities globally in 2020 these are uh, some of the alumni who are occupying very high positions in India as well as abroad. They are in industry, they are in academic institutions, they are in research establishments, various establishments. The motto of uh, Hindustan Institute of uh, Hindustan University is to make every man a success and no man a failure. And the vision of the in, in university is to become an institute of excellence with emphasis on innovation, quality, research, and strategic partnership with universities from abroad. And the mission is to create an ecosystem for learning and world-class research and so on. The value is, um, value statement says that we are bothered about integrity, innovation, and internationalization. The university has um, nine schools, the School of Aeronautical Sciences, Mechanical Sciences, Building Sciences, Computing Sciences, Electrical Sciences, Liberal Arts and Science, School of Management, School of Law, and School of Planning, Design, and Architecture. And it has got a more than 400 uh, faculty, well-qualified faculty, and around 7,000 students. And uh, the students are from various parts of the country, these are different states of the country. The students are uh, hailing from various states of India. And also we have around 50 international students from different parts of the world. And the university follows a student-centric policy. And uh, it provides financial support to students for presenting research papers in conferences, international internships, and exchange programs. It funds um, to support interdisciplinary student teams for innovative um, competitions and participation in international design competitions. We follow the credit transfer system scheme for Indian and international students. That means our students, once you join, you can study one or two semesters 
in any part of the world and the credits that you earn there can be transferred here. Then there is, we conduct a bridge course for the first year students. Regular industrial visits are conducted for students and we also teach various foreign languages such as French, German, uh, Korean, Japanese and so on in addition to English. The academic uh, reforms the university has undertaken and we are, have introduced the project-based learning. That's instead of uh, going on giving lectures, we have adopted the project-based learning. The students will do a project either individually or in groups and based on that, they will be learning and the focus on industrial training. And another important uh, thing we have introduced is at UG level, undergraduate level itself, the students will be able to participate in research projects. This is called research incubation scheme. This will be, and uh, this is very much uh, welcomed by the students. And we also allow the students to undergo the massive open online courses and earn credits. Instead of listening to the lectures in the university, you can uh, join any of the online courses and earn credit, which will be acceptable to the university. And we also teach entrepreneurship. Once you finish the course, instead of looking for a job, you can become an entrepreneur and give jobs to um, others. The salient features of the curriculum is um, recently we have introduced uh, the concept of theory come practical classes. Both of them are combined. Instead of having a separate theory class and a separate lab, we have combined in certain subjects theory and practical combined so that whatever you learn immediately you practice. I told you about the online courses, flexibility in assessments. We also have recently introduced the high performing students can opt for a honors course where you have to study three additional subjects and instead of getting the normal BTEC degree, you will get a BTEC honors. And also in BTEC, we also have introduced a minor subject. And so it is like um, instead of getting BTEC only, BTEC minor, BTEC electronic engineering minor in some other subject which you are interested in. And we also conduct summer and winter courses and make up examinations. This is uh, the scheme of the research incubation at the UG level. It starts in the second year and the groups of three to five students um, as a one batch is um, formed and there is a mentor and who will help the team to identify a research problem and work on it. And at the end of third year, it may end up as a, an indexed publication for each group. So this is an opportunity available for the students to get trained in research. And the students, while doing like this, they have uh, developed a lot of innovative products. And this is one such thing. The first year students last year uh, developed a micro satellite, nano satellite, which weighs only 33.39 grams. And this satellite was launched in a balloon by NASA in America, and it has entered into the India Book of Records in 2018. Similarly, they have developed a racing car, won competitions, then they have won the champion title, and they have also developed a flying bike, like a drone, a bike which can fly. They have formulated and a launching system. And our students also have developed a Kalam satellite 
and it was also launched by NASA um, in 2017. And our students have developed for one of the competitions which happened in USA, the Mars rover, which can autonomously move in a, an alien surface and go and collect samples, store it, bring it back for further analysis. Our students have developed a um, solar panel cleaning robot, which can clean the whole panel and it can move from one panel to the other one uh, independently. And our research and um, is well known and we have established 14 research centers and our university has filed 81 patents and two or three have been um, awarded. We have a large number of funded projects, both national level at, and international projects. I will talk to you about it later. We have many consultancy projects and there are around 380 research scholars. We have international funding. Royal Academy of Engineering UK has funded five, six projects. And in these projects, we have developed various um, innovative products, such as patient assistive robo, virtual power plant, and the NDT applications in costing industries, um, and so on. There we have collaborated with the various universities in UK. And I was telling you about the patents. And in the year 2016, we have become the sixth, we attained the sixth position in India in filing large number of patents. This is the report of the um, Controller General of Patents. And in this one stands in the sixth position. And we have a lot of international collaborations across the world. These are some of the countries. Um, we have partners. And we also have industry collaborated courses with Volkswagen, SMC Pneumatics, Yashkawa Robotics, Intel, IBM, and so on in various um, departments. We have an innovation cell, innovation council in established in Hindustan. And the infrastructure is um, well established. We have uh, so many acres of land and uh, so much of built up area and uh, 31 buildings. And in the laboratories are very well equipped. We have the flight simulator, Alsim where you can, sitting in the ground, you can have an experience of playing an aircraft like a pilot. This is one where a single person can operate here, two people can uh, get trained. And this is robotics lab. A helicopter is available in the campus. Then this is a pneumatic lab automation. Then this is the coders lab. Um, Coders Hub Lab for Computing Sciences. In Aeronautical Engineering Department has got a lot of facilities. It's a low velocity projectile impact test setup. This is a drop test impact setup. And it's a fatigue testing machine where you can test the strength of materials. All eyes impact test facility. Then in the Center for Clean Energy and Nano Convergence, we have Chemical Vapor Deposition Unit, Scanning Electron Microscope. We have Hall Effect Measurement System, High Performance Computing System for doing various calculation of high order, and many more facilities. Uh, the campus also has 100 kilowatt solar power generating system. We have a wastewater treatment uh, plant, decentralized sewage treatment plant. And uh, coming to the policies and procedures, the international students should uh, have uh, passed the qualifying examination and the mark sheets should be submitted during admission. 
I am told that many of you have not submitted the plus two mark sheets, but at the time of admission, you can submit them. Some of the mark sheets which you have submitted are not visible, legible, um, and you also have to, we have informed you, and you have to produce those mark sheets. Then there is a transfer certificate from the school, then migration certificate or school, completion certificate has to be given, and all of you should apply for a passport, and when you travel to India, you should get a student visa. The UG programs, the eligibility is that you should have undergone a formal education for 12 years at the school level and qualified the examination with the minimum marks that uh, is required for joining a degree course. Postgraduate programs, you should have completed 12 years of formal education in school and three years of bachelor's degree at least three years. If you want to study um, MTech, then the bachelor's degree should be of four years, 12 plus four years. Visa requirement. Foreign nationals should have a valid passport and I told you that you should apply for a visa and when you enter India, you should have both these documents. And the nationals of Nepal and Bhutan do not require a visa to enter India directly. But if they come via China, then a visa is required. These are the contact points of uh, the Office of International Affairs. Um, these are the addresses, and this is the point of contact, oia at hindusanhini.ac.in. And you can contact us for any clarification. And the, for you, the classes are going to be held online during the first semester. I think you are aware of it because of the um, COVID pandemic. Travel may not be possible for another uh, few months. So uh, the online classes will be held and we use the platform MS Teams, Microsoft Teams. And the study materials will be available. Um, in MS Teams are the learning management system. And we also um, conduct online tests periodically, which again will be held through MS Teams platform. Assessments will be given. You can submit the assessments back um, through this system. And the end semester examination also may be held online. The academic sessions, first semester, as I told you, will be online. The next one will be decided depending upon the uh, pandemic. The fee structure, whatever has been given, includes uh, tuition, books, exam fee, etc. Hostel fees includes sharing room, either AC or non-air condition, and it also includes the food, laundry, and so on. Then what are the advantages you have chosen in this sun for your studies? And I'm very happy to know that um, the large number of students from Africa, Afghanistan, Nepal, Bangladesh have opted for in the sun university. The university is accredited by NAC with the A grade. And because of that, it is coming and uh, it is having graded autonomy. The courses are NBA accredited, and we are going for the IET accreditation also, a, an organization based in UK. We are uh, all the courses of engineering are going to be accredited by IET. We have state of art laboratories. And another advantage is when you want to study, um, go for postgraduate studies, higher studies, in any of these countries, either you can study in Hindustan itself or you can go uh, to any of our partner universities in USA, UK, Australia, and so on, where direct admission will be available in partner universities. You don't have to apply to so many universities spending um, so much of money. 
and those universities will provide scholarship if you have got um, a good CGPA, up to 50% of the tuition fees will be given as scholarship, no application fees. And admission is not dependent on GRE, GRE scores in many um, universities abroad. Then there is no need for IELTS or other English certification. These are the um, many advantages. Uh, thank you very much. Now I will request um, Mr. George from Kenya, who has studied engineering in our university to talk to you about his experience in Hindustan. Mr. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sir George Omondi Odede, and I'm coming from Kenya. I've been in Kurusan University for three years now. That's uh, I did my diploma in Kenya. So when I joined here, I joined second year. There's a option you can join second year. So I joined second year and I pursued a Bachelor of Technology in Instrumentation and Control Engineering. I'm a hostel student. I've been staying in hostel. So I can advise you guys you can stay in hostel. It's the best place to stay according to the environment and everything. So about uh, Hindustan, uh, academic ways, uh, uh, we do have an uh, internal exam. That is three internal exam and the final exam there. And there's a laboratory practical exam also. Uh, everything we do in theory, we usually have practical uh, classes for it. And um, the practical uh, grades are dif uh, defined from the theory uh, grades. Um, we have uh, elective and uh, elective subjects. Like when you choose uh, instrumentation courses, they we'll give you eight uh, subjects, but uh, they give you a chance to get uh, two elective subjects from different uh, departments. Uh, you can be interested in business, and still doing uh, engineering uh, course. Uh, we have book bank. The book bank, uh, they issue books in every subject in semester. The issue books uh, for the book bank uh, that you stay with it for one semester, then you give uh, the next semester when you're getting the uh, uh, coming semester. There's a library. You can come access the library at any time until uh, 8 to 9 o'clock. The library, they can issue books. You can take uh, to your room, maybe and study, then you give back. They can give you uh, previous purpose. Like I want to examine something you want to get the previous purpose for, for revision. You can uh, go to the library, they'll give you soft copy of the previous purpose also. Um, the departments, uh, all the subs are very active actually. If you have any question, maybe in class you didn't understand anything, you can go to the staff room, meet the department, the, um, the, the lecturers, uh, consult them. They are always ready to help. But, uh, that is what, one thing I like about understanding. We have the international office. International office, because when you come to India with a student visa, every year you have to uh, get a residential permit. And maybe sometimes the, your visa might expire or something. So when you come to international office, they guide you, they'll give you one of the letters. Right now we are uh, applying the, for the uh, residential permit and the visa online. So they guide you, they'll give you the, all that you need, help you attain uh, the visas and residential permit. So you won't uh, have to stress, like other colleges, Usually, usually have to just run here and there, but in Hindustan, they're always ready to help. Suppose you have any issue, any something uh, arising or something, you can come to the international office, they're always ready to listen to you. You can sit with them, discuss it, and they'll give you a proper way or a way forward. Uh, about the hostel life, I'm staying in uh, Jupiter Hostel. Uh, if you check online, Jupiter Hostel is international hostel where most of the students are, uh, international students are staying. And uh, they give us food, that is the breakfast. Uh, good thing, uh, there's Indian food and there's Western food. Like the breakfast, they give you bread. There's omelette once in a week. Uh, lunchtime, they give there's rice, uh, there's chapati, uh, the Indian food also. Uh, and they're really ready to listen to you. Maybe if you find the food is uh, so spicy, you can tell them, they can adjust in, uh, to it. There's chicken for dinner almost every day. And also, you can try Indian food are also there. Uh, another thing about the hostel life, uh, there's laundry. We want to wash our own clothes. So we keep things for laundry, they wash for us, then uh, we take a uh, towel. In hostel life, there's uh, uh, also uh, 
some events like Yarona, where we perform. Uh, now that is uh, away from education, like you know, we have to have a curriculum activity. So there's a Yarona where you can perform uh, drama, you can perform singing, dancing. I usually like dancing, so I'll go and present my dancing. Uh, they uh, give awards. There's football, you can play football, there's badminton, cricket, basketball, and so many other uh, uh, indoors and outdoor games you can join. Uh, another thing is outings, uh, weekends, you can uh, get a uh, get from the wardens, you can go for outing, uh, roam around, come back, it's also permitted, you can say. And the place around uh, is friendly, the people around are friendly, they're ready to assist you in anything. If, even if, okay, some local people would be like very conversant with English, but uh, with one word, two words, they can understand, and they're very ready to help you. Uh, they're not like those who people will take advantage of uh, you or something. They're ready to help you. And I think it's the security hostel. Uh, I I told you I did my diploma in Kenya, and I, now I came to Kenyan. So I have two experiences, uh, Kenyan experience and uh, Indian experience. But the security level in Indian uh, hostel, I didn't, uh, at first I couldn't imagine. You can leave uh, the open one will come take your thing or something. It's very secure. Uh, the water issue, water is there because there's a water plant. The water is there. There's no uh, scarcity of water. And the life is okay. Life is, I can say, I myself, I, I can tell you, Nimsan is the college to go. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask them. I'll get in touch to you. Yeah, now if you have um, okay. any questions. Uh, it was a great. Any student who has any questions, please raise your hand and we would unmute you so that uh, you can ask the question directly to the uh, sir. Sir, so we have got a few questions. So there is a student, uh, Yosef, Yusuf, who has asked the question that uh, he is from Ethiopia and he has gotten a 50% scholarship, like he has gotten a G. So he is asking that if if you could upgrade him to a G1, so <laughs> that's something I think you would have to answer. I am not sure how you take this. Um. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, um, see, based on uh, the grades, the or marks you have obtained, the SIA has uh, offered you this D2 uh, fellowship that is 50% uh, fees concession. Um, uh, that is, let us see whether. Um, There are a large number of students um, who are under this category. It may not be possible for the university to give all um, under the G1 category. Maybe on um, uh, sir, actually, you can write to us. Yes, sir. So there's another student, bit, uh, she's uh, asked that uh, she's received the SIA scholarship, but on the admission letter, it says that she has to pay 3,500 USD for second semester and 4,500 USD for the rest of the years. So uh, can you give a little clarification on this? Yeah, the first semester, we have um, charged only for one semester hostel accommodation because first semester is going to be online. So we have uh, we are charging you for one semester only for the hostel accommodation food and accommodation whereas second year onwards one has to stay in the hostel for the whole year so it is for, because of that there is a difference okay sir first year it is less and second year mm -hmm. onwards it will be more because first year the tuition fees plus the um, one semester hostel fees put together and we have reduced the scholarship of $3,500 and the remaining 
thing one has to pay. Whereas for the second year, the tuition fees, uh, which is normally it is uh, less than the first year, and including the hostel fees for the whole year, two semesters. That's why this difference is coming. Okay, and uh, sir, a few students have asked that uh, they have not received the offer letter. So, students, uh, institute has already uploaded all the offer letters on yeah, the all, student dashboard. All the 150, I mean, all the students, uh, um, we have uh, uploaded the um, offer letter, professional admission letter. Okay. Uh, so, students, if anyone is not able to see, they, mm -hmm. they can write to us. Maybe. Okay, uh, so uh, there'll be a raise hand option in uh, the tool. So you can raise your hand, we'll unmute you. You can directly ask your question to sir. Uh, students, if any questions, so please do not send it to me privately. Send it to everyone so that sir could also see that what is the question you are asking. So sir could also answer the question directly. If you send it directly to me, sir would not be able to see the questions. So sir, we have another question here. The student is asking about uh, the... ...about uh, the... Classes or classes, when would they start and how would they join into the online classes? Could you give a bit of a clarification about that? Yeah, we, um, see, so far we have been conducting during uh, from March onwards, uh, after the pandemic started, we have started um, the online classes through a platform called MS Team. So you will be able to join through your mobile or a laptop or um any other such um gadget and we will inform you when um how to join this uh, ms teams and listen to the lectures and in these ms teams we will also upload the study material so you can uh, study that leisurely and through the ms teams online classes you can listen to the lectures which will be very interactive and the study material also will be available. A large amount of study material, videos, and so on will be available for you. And probably in a, um, uh, Subana, you can tell when the sessions will start. I think in November. Or how? What are the plans? We uh, a lot of institutes have started their sessions. It is based on you that if you could accommodate the students, uh, yeah. a few of the IITs and IIMs have like they start their session a bit early, right? So they have started it. So they have given the joining links to the student. So if you want, you can start the session uh, like uh, if everybody has joined an exit, you can start yeah. the session whenever you are uh, necessary. You can start it in October as well and November as well, anything. Mostly the okay. current session is like uh, till October, PG would start and in November, the UG would start. So yeah. you would, uh, you can uh, do it uh, accordingly, sir. Okay, we are ready for uh, these uh, classes. Uh, uh, so we can allow you, I mean, we can give you time for this uh, writing the examination and all that, depending upon when it is going to be held. Yeah, uh, Mariam uh, has asked the question that uh, should not the SR scholarship cover the hostel charges also? Why uh, do the student have to pay for the SI scholarship if they have it? So, uh, Mariam, but the answer is that uh, the SI scholarship is worth 3500 USD. So, if your hostel charges, your mess charges, your tuition charges fall under this amount, then the entire thing will be covered by study in India. If it exceeds 3500 USD, then uh, the remaining balance has to be paid by the student. Some of the students who have opted for BBA, BCA, 
and all that they don't have to pay any money during the first year. Actually, uh, it covers, it is within the uh, SIA scholarship amount of $3,500. Uh, there's another student, sir, who says that they have a national examination within two months. So if the online classes are at the same time, how can, I mean, be, be accommodated? Probably this is uh, the 12th examination they're talking. National examination they have mentioned here. So, uh, yeah, in Ethiopia, the plus two examination has not been conducted. Right. Uh, uh, that is what is going to happen in, I think, I am told, December 1st. Um, we have to see whether the government will agree. And UGC will agree uh, for this. Normally, during admission, they are supposed to give the plus two uh, mark list. In this case, a large number of students are not able, will not be able to submit the plus two certificate mark list. Right. This is to be well, seen how we handle this. Okay. Uh, uh, there is another student who was asked that uh, David has received a G4 uh, scholarship. So, David, G4 is a fee waiver category. So, that means, uh, I mean, the full amount has to be paid by you only. Which one? So there's one question from David who's asking that uh, he's been awarded G4 fee waiver category. So, uh, I mean, what happens to a student who's received? So again, uh, the answer is they have to pay the full amount themselves. Yeah, yeah. They have to pay the full amount. So, so to, just to reiterate to all of the students here, so I explain G1, G2, G3, G4 again. G1, so you would not pay the tuition fees if you have received a G1. And you would only have to pay the fees for the hostel and food and all the rest of them. Then G2 means 50% tuition fee waivers, which means that only 50% of your tuition fees you have to pay, and you plus you have to pay the hostel and your nest fees. And then G3 means 25% tuition fee waivers, which means that you would only receive a, a waiver of 25% out of 75% of the tuition fee you will have to pay at hostel fees and nest fees. G4 that you have to pay the complete amount, you have not received. Any tuition fee waiver, you have to pay the complete tuition fees along with the hostel and mess fee. If a student receives an SS scholarship, which means that study in India team would pay 3,500 USD to the institute in behalf of you. And if your complete cost, which is including the hostel fees, tuition fees, everything exceeds 3,500 USD, the remaining amount the student would have to pay. Uh, study in India scholarship would only cover 3,500 USD. The rest the student would have to pay. I think this is clear to all the students, the complete uh, bifurcation of G1, G2, G3, G4, and SIS scholarship. If you have any other question, please post the question or raise your hand. We will answer your question. So, any other questions, students? If anybody has any other questions, sir, would you like to uh, say the last few questions to your institute? So, if you have any other questions, you can um, write to me also. I have given the email ID address. Um, you can write to me or uh, the point of contact. We will be in touch with you. Uh, sir, one student, uh, there's Michael who's raised uh, his hand. He wants to ask a question, so I'm unmuting him. Okay. Uh, Michael, you've been unmuted. You can ask your question too, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Nikhil Tamboy from Ethiopia. Uh, from Ethiopia, uh, I have got the SIA scholarship, and I have got also the admission letter. But 
uh, in the admission letter it says that the, the SIA scholarship covered the $3,500 uh, fee. When I go to the Hindustan Institute of Technology and, and see the tuition fee and the amount of money I should pay, it's, it's almost uh, $3,500. And uh, in the admission letter, it's asking me to pay almost $1,500 and uh, more. And I'm, I'm not clear about the SIA scholarship and how many, uh, how much money I should pay. I'm applying for the aeronautical uh, engineering. Which course you have applied for? Which course? Yeah, mathematical or computer science or electrical? I'm uh, from aeronautical. Huh? Aeronautical science. Aeronautical. So yeah. the how we have calculated is the first year tuition fees plus yeah. one uh, hostel fees for one semester added together total money you have to pay to the university yeah. and we have reduced the scholarship of three thousand five hundred dollars. The rest of the amount you have to pay. That is what that is how we have calculated and told you um, in the provisional admission letter. Then second okay. year onwards, yeah. you have to pay uh, for both the semesters. Hostel fee, tuition fee is um, five hundred rupees less, five hundred dollars less, I think, little less for the second year, third year, and fourth year. But hostel fee will be for the whole year. Because first year, you are not going to come to India and stay in the hostel. You are going to study online. So we are not charging for that period. Hostel fees for that period. Okay. Uh, since I'm from Ethiopia and I'm not able to, to afford that money, is there any chance to get, uh, for me to get the full uh, money covered? Is there any chance? Which one? Okay, any? I'm asking that. Is there any chance for me to get the total money covered by any institute and so on? Um, maybe on in your case to case basis, uh, one can see whether. You can uh, contact so after this directly. Okay, is email uh, provided for us? So, so Niro knows the answer is the tuition fees uh, is for the institute and the hospital fees is just for the second semester or the first semester. Yes, sir. And uh, some echo is there. I'm not able to hear you. Audio, video. So the question is that is 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 about the complete structure of the tuition fees. So, Niroj, I would ask you to contact Sir directly. They had given you the details of the email IDs, and he could clear you out about what is the breakup of all the tuition fees and the hostel fees. So, so if anybody has any other questions, please raise your hand, or we could uh, conclude the session. Yeah, if uh, there are no more clarifications, if any more clarification, they can write to me and we will be um, happy to answer uh, and clarify the doubts. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, students, for attending this session. And, sir, thank you so much for giving such a nice presentation, clearing all the doubts of the students. Uh, students, we are now closing. If you have any other questions, please post the questions.
uh, to sir the video of the whole session will be sent to you on your mails and you can check it out later as well and uh, please go through your operators there are links there you could contact sir directly thank you so much sir for uh, joining the session and giving such a wonderful presentation uh, we are logging off for today thank you for such a good night can insist on them tell them that they can write to any personal problem uh, they can write to us we will see uh, as you have already heard sir i have already said that write from any uh, any of your mail ids to sir or to any of the personal in the mail presentation they would respond to you uh, please do mention your sir id the sir could keep it back to you <laughs> Also mentioned, yes, I did this. So know who you are and which course you are applying. Thank you, sir. We are closing off session. You could log off. You could also log off. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.